Well, it's good to see you again. And by the way, are you a mark? Let's talk about it. All right, so we're back. We're going to do another based take. Uh, I just got back from seeing Peter Gabriel in Detroit and uh, seeing the wonderful and amazing Tony Levin. And uh, it got something going on here in my tinker. And I want to talk about it. Guys, we have to talk gear. So, no time has ever been better for bass players. I mean, the influencers all over, you know, uh, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. I, I mean, bass is getting the love. But at the same time, companies are catching on and telling you, Bye, 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 bye. So for me, let's roll it back to about 2012. I started working at a music store um, native to my area. And I'm a bass player and um, a traveling one, and it's really, really cool. I know my meek presentation doesn't show you that I've actually traveled all over and played bass, but who cares? I'm trying to teach you not to be a mark. So there's all this gear on the market. There's so much and everything is going to tell you that, you know, you need to get this floor preamp and you need to get like this back of house rack thing. And um, you need to get like one of those Phil, Phil Jones. I don't know, but it's got like 30,000 two inch speakers. Sorry, 30, 30,000 two inch speakers like built into it and like a recessed horn that's at a 45 degree angle. And uh, then you have to put like magic pixie dust in it to uh, give your bass that extra sizzle. And you don't need these things. Do not be a mark. Buy gear that works in the necessities of what you are doing. So if you have this whole floor arrangement and like a million effects pedals and your band literally needs you to like just take up your bass and uh, let's go to A just pedal i'm talking you two bass baby adam clayton and that's all you gotta do just do that that's all you have to do if you want to write a more complicated part and and mess with the band or if it's like your band and your primary writer then yeah maybe get your effects out and play the dot gain and the pentatonics or <laughs> and all that stuff but you don't need a million things on the floor and a million things running to back a house and a bunch of signal being sent to the front because honestly there's two things on the market I always see and I'm I'm a little older and, and maybe I aged well but I'm in my 40s and I'm close to my 40s and I'm going to tell you the Sans Amp Tech 21 it's fine it's super it, it, it works when you use it right and dark glass you're a mark dark glass is thin it's for like that weird drive you know, I, I've seen the same Nathan Navarro videos. Remember, he was the guy that was doing the Skrillex stuff, the little glowy thumb ring, and, you know, wow, 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 wow. You don't need all this stuff. If you're trying to get rid of, like, your cabinet and all of that and, and use, like, you know, something on the floor, honestly, just go buy a radio green box and get yourself a decent floor EQ. That's all you need. If you need like an overdrive or a muff, um, like a, a distortion, if it, the situation requires it, get those things and set them accordingly in your chain. If you're getting rid of your amp or even if you're keeping your amp, just use them accordingly. But like the dark glass, like super thin, nasally, like I guess if you're into Billy Sheehan and you're trying to do like high leads on bass and all that and the band requires it, I, I guess go for it. But getting all that gear, it, it doesn't matter. Look, this is, uh, as a joke, my friend bought this from, uh, what was it, Goodwill, like 15 years ago. It's a Carlo Rebelli bass. It does have the double scale though, the, you know, the double octave scale. And uh, I put some flat wounds on it. I put some Nord Strand pickups because, well, let's be honest, he makes great pickups. I still want to try one of his weird little funky basses with all the little things up here, the little knobs. But understand that the gear isn't going to make you better. No matter how much you sit on talk bass, active bass, 
and and talk to dudes that have like f off money or doctor money they go oh you know i buy a vintage ebo and i run it through the moment that conversation happens check out just get back to your instrument learn your parts learn your gear get a decent stage rig just get like a small rig if you're playing and you've got like monitors in front of house you you don't need a ton of gear so they won't say this to you on instagram they won't say it to you on youtube they'll tell you bye bye the gear oh this is my new signature whatever they're not going to tell you to just actually get decent road ready gear and just learn your parts learn your parts play your bass and if you need a little fuzz or a little this go for it add it into your chain use it in a strategic and intelligent way but you don't have to like buy all this dumb gear that's going to thin your signal it's going to make you sound weird and any mistake you make is going to be amplified just hone the skills man look if a song just requires like an adam clayton u2 like you know that just 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 play that just do it it doesn't hurt you it doesn't make you look bad in front of your friends because if your gear is simple and it sounds good and your playing is honed in and you feel good and you're vibing that's awesome just just run with that every single time but when it comes to all the the little gimmicks like the glowing thumb rings that make you go wow 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 and all the pitch shift pedals and all the dumb you know floor eqs that have like eight different switches to go between guess what if you can't send just a decent and steady clean signal out to your sound man he's going to kill your mix he's just going to cut you out so if you have like something on the floor like a tone bone which i love radial i love radial that green box di it's a standard for a reason dude best thing for bass players buy one but if all you're doing is getting like some you know preamp on the floor that has you know 20 different settings and you can't keep it steady volume wise dude they're gonna cut your signal you won't be in the mix and you're gonna be mad and i can't hear myself and if you're using in-ears they're gonna be yelling at you by the way because uh if you use in-ears and you go rogue on your tone and your volume they're gonna yell at you and that's only on the smaller shows on the bigger shows you, you have no control like literally they kind of own your sound so little little tip but uh this has been my based take and i'm gonna run away one second because i want to show you something oh popos bass players i'm i'm dead serious i've had this thing uh, there's my old foam when I used to put it in like my weird cab insert, but buy one of these. This is legit. This is legit. Like one of the best DI boxes you'll ever get. Keep it in your gig bag, in your rig. You'll never go wrong. So if I ever had to say there's a product to buy, it's honestly just a simple DI. It's nice and clean. It works. Great signal. Great pad.